Yes. Okay. All right. So now you could all see that, I hope. All right. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about choosing between the distributions of Galera cluster and what it really means to have these many distributions, really. Talk to you a little bit about what Galera is, who develops it, why, I guess, distributions exist. Um, obviously, understand the basis. Just go do the differences and then talk a little bit about what's coming up in MySQL 8 and the Galera 4. So I think this is a pretty rare webinar because we're not going to be talking only about the MySQL uh, that, that you, with Galera cluster that you get from galeraclaster.com. We're going to talk to you a lot about the various distributions. I think we've never actually done something like this before, uh, where we acknowledge all the uh, other products. So I'd like to start off with uh, what is Linux? I presume all of you on this uh, webinar use Linux to some extent, because you are interested in Galera cluster, and Galera cluster only runs on uh, Linux or free BSD operating systems. It doesn't run on uh, Windows, for example. and Linux is a kernel. There are lots of distributions uh, of the operating system uh, of operating systems that include the Linux kernel that you are probably familiar with. Uh, you may be familiar with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu, Fedora, SUSE. Uh, but there are also um, Debian distributions, for example, that don't only call themselves Debian GNU Linux. They also have like Debian um, heard with a different kernel. So Linux by itself largely is a kernel, and uh, you are familiar with using maybe not necessarily the kernel, but uh, distributions around the, the kernel. And that's very similar uh, parallel to you know what, what is Galera cluster. Uh, Galera cluster is basically uh, advanced database clustering software. We've got, uh, you know, it provides for no data loss, uh, excellent uptime, good scalability for growth. It's a uh, multi-master based, so you can have, um, you know, a bit of three nodes and you can write to any node at any given time. And the data is written to all nodes as opposed to being written to one node and then later on copied to two other nodes. And Galera is a solution for high availability that a lot of people uh, tend, tend to use. So Galera really is a, a generic replication plugin for database servers. I think this is quite important because today we're talking to you about Galera cluster for MySQL, but you know, this time next year, we could talk to you about Galera cluster for potentially something else. Uh, it obviously uses a replication API to interact with a database management system. Uh, we use something called the right set replication WSREP uh, API project. It's obviously fully open source on GitHub. Uh, and uh, of course the database, the Galera plugin must have the same WSREP API version for everything to work as per normal. Uh, I will uh, talk to you a little bit about versions uh, much later on, especially when we uh, introduce to uh, Galera 4. So Galera of course has been developed uh, by our codership uh, the developers and experts of Galera cluster. It's been around since uh, 2007. So, you know, easily now uh, over, over a decade, it's about 12 year project from uh, the three co-founders from left to right, that's Timu, Alex and, uh, and Sepo. Uh, follows a full on services business model. It's very widely used, well-tested software, different kinds of applications. It's really for people that uh, basically can't uh, tolerate downtime, data loss, uh, and the lost transactions, and so forth. And I think maybe the most interesting thing is it's got a, a ton of users uh, across all kinds of various industries, uh, from you know SaaS software, uh, gambling software, telcos, banks, uh, gaming, uh, marketing, so forth. So um, back to like the Linux uh, vari variants, MySQL ecosystem is also extremely wide and varied. Um, Codeship, of course, chooses to make a MySQL version. Currently, there's 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5 
And with uh, eight zero coming, uh, you can be rest assured the five five variant will be um, will be deprecated. So there'll only be a focus on five six five seven and uh, eight zero. Codership, of course, works very closely with MariaDB Corporation uh, to make MariaDB Galera cluster. Uh, and of course, we'll talk to you a, a lot about that. Uh, Codership does not work with uh, Procrona, who has a branch, maybe a, a fork that uh, does port changes from the MariaDB tree as well as the Codership tree, uh, especially for uh, PXC8. We'll talk to, to you a little bit about that much later as well. And uh, of course, there are some uh, additional features there too. So, uh, what is different at the base? And this is a this is uh, adapted from Daniel Van Eden's graph, but a bit more uh, streamlined to tell you that if you follow the branches at the base, MariaDB's uh, branch at the base is generally. Uh, MySQL 5.5, which constantly gets uh, features moved in from 5.6, 5.7, uh, and partially even from 8.0 in the, uh, as, as things go by, just the things that we implemented. Whereas Procona server is a uh, drop in replacement for MySQL. And uh, no one really focuses uh, in terms of uh, getting stuff from my, uh, MySQL cluster. Which is different from, uh, you know, Galera the cluster. So for all intents and purposes, uh, Codeship's MySQL Galera cluster it's the it's just a MySQL based version plus Galera cluster. You get this from GaleraCluster.com. You are able to get uh, repositories uh, for your common Linuxes, so RPMs, DEBs uh, available. It is for all intents and purposes the obviously the latest greatest Galera cluster. Uh, that is available because uh, it is coming from the makers. Uh, Codeship, of course, plans the roadmaps of Galera cluster, all the new features, the bug fixes, etc. Uh, so, I mean, you you are at a Codeship webinar, so this is of course the most pristine and naturally recommended version of Galera cluster for you to use, uh, as opposed to uh, everything else that is available out there. So. Uh, Naturally, one we would recommend this, uh, and you know we offer uh, support and services for for this as well. But we also do for for pretty much uh, for everything we offer. There's also Pocono server for MySQL, which built on top of MySQL, and it aims to be the more performant branch of MySQL. And back in the day, uh, things like ExtraDB, uh, the um, the, the branch of InnoDB uh, were, were extremely uh, interesting. Uh, in fact, MariaDB right up until uh, 10.2 was using uh, ExtraDB as the default InnoDB, but I chose to switch to using uh, upstream InnoDB and its uh, own, own uh, fork of InnoDB. There are some features that are not present inside of MySQL in the base, um, the code of MySQL, things like MyRox and TalkyDB. However, those are not usable with Galera cluster. Things like more instrumentation around user statistics, uh, you know, improved slow query logging, uh, improvements around the XDB, you know, double write buffers, uh, compressed columns with dictionaries. Uh, I, I think some of the things that are extremely useful uh, that you may find would be things around the PAM authentication plugin, the audit plugin, uh, the vault, uh, HashiCorp's vault encryption plugin. Uh, things like change page tracking instead of uh, extra DB, uh, exciting the show grads, and uh, the ability to kill idle transactions. So uh, you'll realize that there are lots of these changes uh, around there just that uh, do exist that you may find that you may uh, need. Uh, and that's when you you may pick the uh, a base server like Pocono server for, for MySQL. There's also, of course, um, MariaDB server, the, uh, the base MariaDB server. Uh, it's also a feature compatible uh, drop in replacement uh, fork of MySQL. It has a, a, a whole bunch of new features, like so many storage engines, obviously, like uh, the Corona server has, more even, obviously. It has uh, features that are potentially better for DBAs, uh, you know, parallel replication, Oracle syntax. Table uh, table elimination. It's a database uh, by itself in its own right. 
even though it uses volib MySQL, four three three or six, like MySQL, it really is a database in its own right. Um, it has so many different features and enhancements compared to to MySQL, and that uh, you know the, the makers of it, of course, are Photoshop's uh, you know premier partners. Uh, so just a highlight of what what's available. Um, in MariaDB server is things like um, you know the ability to have Oracle compatibility, so you can use a uh, sequences instead of just auto increments. You can use PLSQL. I think it's got uh, some close to, uh, you know, uh, it's it's got an eighty twenty solution basically. So maybe eighty percent of, of uh, Oracle is available if you're migrating. Uh, there's of course more storage engines, but you know from a, a Galera cluster standpoint, you really are focused on you know and uh, naturally, Codership works very closely with the AODB developers uh, at MariaDB. So you get um, uh, good integration between AODB and, uh, and Galera Cluster. It's also got temporal uh, data via system version tables. This is completely unique to MariaDB. Uh, naturally, it includes Galera Cluster 4, which we'll, we'll talk about. So you don't actually have to get a separate download. It comes standard with MariaDB. Uh, it's got a lot of security improvements and changes. Uh, you know, uh, things like uh, the, the way it stores user data is uh, completely uh, changed. It will optimize the improvements, uh, changes in the replication and backup layer, uh, compression, column compression. It's got uh, it, uh, invisible columns, the ability so that if you to migrate apps, this could be handy because you could just hide uh, columns. It's got the instant add column uh, feature. Uh, and, and uh, lots of features from uh, 10 3, 10 2, 10 1 uh, that you don't quite find in stock by SQL. So, you know, of course, I, I, I don't have, uh, you know, three to six hours to talk to you about MariaDB features, but it, it, it's a lot of features. So, if we take these base servers and then we add Galera cluster to it, uh, you know, what, what about those enhancements? And you realize that um, PXE. Forgot actually be cluster and MariaDB Galera cluster actually build on top of the existing changes uh, and then embed the right set replication library. So when you go to um, Pacoda.com, you can download Pacoda server for MySQL or Pacoda actually be cluster. It's two different downloads. Whereas with uh, MariaDB, you will just go to uh, MariaDB.org uh, uh, and download, say, MariaDB 10.4. And MariaDB 10.4 includes the option for you to get. Um, straight out of the box, the ability to get uh, Galera cluster. You don't actually have to go and get two different downloads. So what 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 benefits could you get if you, had, for example, used MariaDB Galera cluster uh, is that you could get the third pool. The third pool is a MySQL enterprise only feature and uh, it's available uh, in MariaDB. Uh, you could, it's also, of course, available in PXE. Uh, uh, you could just, uh, realize that every any core server feature is, is also a, a exposed even though the replication library itself is replaced uh, from the uh, regular say um, asynchronous replication instead of MariaDB semi-synchronous is also on a plugin uh, for replication semi-synchronous is also built in just like uh, right set replications uh, for, Gal for Galera cluster it's also maybe interesting to note that if you uh, change the parser SQL mode equals Oracle instead of MySQL It'll continue pausing whatever Oracle uh, PLSQL that you you push to MariaDB, uh, and uh, you can have it backed via Galera cluster backend. So you could actually have a highly available uh, MariaDB Galera cluster with uh, you know SQL mode equals Oracle even. And the possibilities tend to start becoming maybe a little bit more endless, especially when you start thinking about future spider support with Galera cluster, uh, things like uh, getting uh, XA support. Uh, and thinking about uh, you know sharding clusters, so naturally, uh, while uh, while Codership is always going to make a MySQL version, we also could uh, start experimenting more with uh, MariaDB, uh, providing more more value, more different products around it uh, as well, uh, and so forth. So, um, Pacon XDB cluster obviously. Uh, Again, it's a distribution, so it comes. So if you think of it like uh, you know, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it comes with a bunch of things that you could use. It's integrated. It comes with you know extra backup. 
it's got uh, proxy proxy SQL as a load balancer proxy comes with a configuration script uh, a, a nice little admin script to config the load balancer uh, it comes with strict mode and strict mode is uh, kind of interesting because sometimes uh, people you know uh, use Galera cluster with my ISAB and uh, this this is something you should obviously not do because uh, my ISAB is Bizeb is not a recommended storage engine for you to use with um, with Galera. It, so a strict mode could actually just disable it for you. Uh, tables without primary keys. Uh, we know that uh, tables without primary keys are extremely bad form for for Galera. So um, they, they they I mean they can work until they stop working because InnoDB generates a, its own internal primary keys. But we always recommend that you find tables without primary keys and uh, Insert a primary key to ensure that uh, it continues working in Galera application. If you're going to change the binary log format uh, from row to mix or mix to uh, statement, is obviously something that you you can do if you have the permissions. But it's not recommended that when you use Galera because Galera really requires the row bit log format. Uh, you only want to log to a file when you're using uh, logging as opposed to logging to tables. Um, and the InnoDB auto increment lock mode. Which is normally set to um, uh, one, uh, which is the consecutive lock mode. Actually, it should be set to two, which is interleaved lock mode. You can set all of this in strict mode, and uh, Agoda XDB Cluster takes care of this for you. So you, it's sort of an option that makes your life like uh, a lot easier, uh, so to speak, to make it stricter. Uh, there's also, of course, the ability to automatically configure SSL encryption. I think that's kind of handy. Um, because you could just uh, have a variable called PXE encrypt class of traffic. And we do occasionally find people say, hey, you know, SSL is a little hard, hard to think. Uh, but actually, the reality is it's not, not too hard to configure SSL. Again, if you go to the documentation, we tell you exactly how to do that. Um, of course, you get the interview improvements um, inside of XRDB around full text search, uh, you know, page fragmentation counters. Look, look at anything XRDB has, and you'll find that uh, it is available there. Um, of course, it's integrated with Proponent monitoring and management. So um, naturally, if you do, if you also get that that software, it'll also work work, work with it. And uh, I guess one of the uh, interesting things is it also includes the uh, Keyring Vault plugin for encryption. So I also put Keyring file for uh, completeness, but uh, you won't use a file key management for uh, encryption. You use uh, something like HashiCorp's Vault, for example. So basically out of the box, you could uh, do this. And uh, maybe most interesting is that this this encryption stuff is based on, again, the base Agoda server for MySQL, which encryption wise actually includes mostly stuff from MySQL um, as well as uh, partially uh, MariaDB, MariaDB. So you, you are getting a different different sort of level of encryption for, uh, that PXC offers and Brady offers and MySQL offers. That is obviously got MariaDB Galera cluster, which I already mentioned. You know, it's fully integrated into MariaDB server. It's an all-in-one download. Uh, this is uh, extremely useful, powerful, uh, and we work closely with MariaDB to make sure Galera cluster exists inside of MariaDB server. Uh, it's the only only distribution today shipping Galera for in a GA fashion. It's been shipping this now since um, May May or June of this year, so it's it's been around for a while. You can also do a rolling upgrade from Galera three to Galera four. That means if you go from MariaDB ten three to ten four, you can do that. Uh, sometimes people do ask, uh, can you migrate from say MySQL five seven to Galera for uh, on MariaDB ten four? You know the answer. Can you do a rolling upgrade? That that one definitely gets a bit more complex. But uh, can you do a dump and restore? The answer is is, is yes. But uh, again, contact if you would like to do such things. You know you could contact us and we could definitely help you with your migrations uh, if need be. It's also the one with the first hint of new Galera four features that exist. Yeah, including streaming replication, which has the support for large transactions, group commit support, as well as the ability to use backup logs because Maria, MariaDB has backup logs now as well. And Maria Backup, which is the backup tool 
does the uh, state stop shot transfer with a lightweight, lightweight lockdown as well. Uh, so basically, uh, everything in MariaDB server is available to use a Galera cluster as long as Galera itself supports it. So things like the spider storage engine, the memory storage engine, these are things that Galera itself does not support at the moment. So spider eventually will be supported. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, if you want to use uh, the Oracle features, if you want to use uh, table validation inside of your uh, schema, all of this will just work with, uh, with a Galera backend. Uh, and we've we've done so we've done testing to show that the Oracle stuff also continues working, sequences work, and so forth, obviously. So you know, in general conclusion, uh, branch variance is that you know upstream you really have um, Photoshop Galera cluster, and that's the version, of course, we'd love for you to use. But there also is MariaDB Galera cluster uh, with Galera three, as well as Galera four. And uh, there's also um, you know Pacoda XDB cluster with Galera three and the Galera four is 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 is, is coming up uh, eventually as well. So there are obviously some feature highlights uh, around the Galera three and uh, four uh, scenarios. So of course you got things like intelligent donor selection. So you can uh, prefer a donor that does the incremental state transfer. Uh, we also of course support cluster crash recovery. So if you have put uh, power failure, if you just have PC recovery equals on, all nodes maintain the cluster information persistently, so you don't have to bootstrap the first node when the cluster restarts. This is extremely handy because um, typically if your nodes go down uh, and you need to do a bootstrap, you may be thinking about having to have manual intervention uh, if you've not uh, scripted this properly. Uh, for a streaming replication uh, that replicates transactions of uh, any, any size, as transactions are replicated in small increments, it's got huge transaction support. Uh, we have slides dedicated to that later. Consistency voting protocol, uh, you develop inconsistencies of the nodes vote uh, when, when it's detected, and also DDL optimizations such that the lock only applies to the affected uh, table. Uh, so earlier I said we'll talk to you a little bit about gallery replication versions. So there have been many major releases, one, two, three, the current production head is 326, uh, many WSRAP API versions as well, 1.25, uh, API 26 is what corresponds with Galera 4, and that's what you'll get uh, today inside of um, uh, MariaDB 10.4. Uh, when WSRAP API changes occur, you have to perform a rolling upgrade through your entire system. Uh, and be careful of WSRAP uh, API uh, mismatches. And in fact, the most common error we, we see inside of uh, error logs is that there are API mismatches. And that's what you uh, want to avoid, obviously. So, uh, the exciting stuff is that uh, MySQL 8 plus Galera 4 is available uh, today. Uh, not for you, unfortunately, but uh, there, there has been an internal beta that I've been playing with. Uh, I've uh, been doing it on CentOS 7 for RPMs. Uh, we have obviously got to work out some bugs. I'm going to list them some of these bugs, but they're mostly around installation anyway. So for, uh, that, that, that currently affect production, uh, the GTID sequence numbers uh, generate from Galera sequence numbers. So occasionally there are holes in the streaming replication fragments, uh, especially when you do a rollback streaming replication transaction or a transaction with that fail certification. This, this will be fixed uh, relatively soon. Uh, WSRAP cluster address has to be set inside the bootstrap script. This, this is an easy fix in our installation. Also, when you remove uh, the, the packages, uh, you need to actually manually remove everything. So again, this is a, again fairly easy fix. And uh, so far, uh, limitation that I uh, noticed in my, in my beta is the X protocol uh, is not supported yet. But uh, Seppo, uh, the, the CEO, co-founder, has a working tree uh, that you can actually query with Python. He's already tested it, uh, and obviously JavaScript. So the X protocol plugin is uh, actually working. So uh, what what obviously would not would not work is uh, having MySQL shell uh, configure a Galera cluster for you. But the X protocol and the plugin uh, does work. And I don't know if uh, MySQL shell uh, and configuring Galera would be something that many people are interested in. That's something that uh, you can also definitely send feedback to us, uh, file, 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 you know, GitHub request, or also just 
you know, go on the mailing list and tell us that that is something that you'd uh, look forward to. Uh, so that auto configuration option. So what is streaming replication? This is the base uh, for supporting huge transactions. Uh, Galera 3 basically allowed a transaction uh, to be processed on the master node. And then basically the node that your app was connected to uh, until commit time. Uh, then these large transactions, uh, writes that could be large, hard to process. So you have options like WS wrapbacks, WS size to prevent large transactions because those process write sets in a single memory resident buffer. So typically, you know, you, you want to limit this to something like uh, two gigabytes before. Uh, so now in the uh, Galera cluster four, you don't have to worry about it. You can have unlimited size in the cluster. You can still reject large transactions, but you don't have to worry uh, about it either. So what is a large transaction? Basically, if you do a load data in file that is large, this could be something that is considered a large transaction. Uh, WS Rep Max WS size has an upper limit of two gigabytes, so we consider anything larger than two gigabytes a large transaction. We have a new knowledge base on the Galera cluster website that actually tells you how to handle large transactions with the use of a tool called PT Archiver uh, from Toyota Toolkit. Uh, there's also a linking to a practical test here uh, how big your Galera uh, transactions uh, can be. So streaming replication is such that you basically replicate the transactions gradually in very small fragments during the transaction processing. So even before the actual commit, you gotta replicate these small transaction fragments across the network. Uh, so you could maybe have that in like 10, 10K, 10K byte uh, chunks, for example. So you can actually configure the, the size threshold for fragment replication uh, at runtime. Replicated fragments are applied in slave threads. So they preserve the transaction state all cluster nodes. And you can uh, process write sets much greater than two gigabytes in size naturally. So to configure it, it's fairly easy. Fa fairly easy. Uh, basically, session variables, they're dynamic. And you have to play around with a TRX fragment unit, uh, which has got unit metrics for fragmenting. Uh, basically, options are bytes, rows, statements. You got WS rep uh, transaction fragment size. Again, threshold units in size when fragments will be replicated. Zero means you don't have our streaming replication turned on. Uh, it's obviously dead on. So um, basically, excessive logging and elevated replication overhead. Sometimes you will definitely you will, uh, it's not sometimes. I mean, you will definitely notice that there is going to be uh, degraded transaction throughput rates. So you'll never get at the same transaction throughput that you get uh, without streaming replication in place. But if you have large transactions, uh, you definitely can. Uh, you know, uh, cut those large transactions up into size and distribute them across the cluster. So uh, an example I'd say is, you know, set them to 10,000 rows, but again, this is fully configurable and I highly recommend you uh, play with it, uh, again, based on your data set. And your application, of course, can set uh, streaming application on and off on a need by need basis. This is again, as I said, fully dynamic. Um, also throwing in some new metadata. So there's some WS rep tables in the MySQL database now. Um, things like uh, show tables from MySQL like WS rep will show you the WS rep cluster, cluster members as well as streaming log. And uh, streaming log, of course, is actually there only for streaming replication use cases. Uh, anyway, uh, WS rep cluster, it contains the current uh, view of the clusters, some identity information also about cluster capabilities. The other things like cluster UUID contains the UUID of the cluster. The view ID corresponds to the cluster's uh, value of the WS rep cluster conf ID. This is the number of cluster configuration changes which are often in the cluster. The view sequence number uh, is corresponds to the Galera sequence number associated with the cluster view. And the protocol version is the same value as uh, WS rep protocol version the variable. It's a protocol version of MySQL WS rep or MariaDB WS rep uh, patch, basically. And the capabilities column contains the capabilities bit mask provided by the Galera library. It's metadata that will be needed to recover node state during a crash recovery. So uh, this is an important uh, new, new table. We've also got WS rep cluster members. Um, basically, uh, uh, you'll notice that uh, and the results of the in the example, you can see the cluster is composed of three nodes. Uh, so three nodes, minimum Galera cluster. Uh, node UIDs are unique for each node. Uh, that's that's quite natural. Uh, cluster UID is the same across 
for all three and cross was the rated value found in the WRF across the table. Showed in the example earlier. Uh, again, this, this makes sense. It's all joining the, the same cluster. Each node, of course, is a unique name. So uh, Gallery 1, Gallery 2, Gallery 3. Uh, named the configuration file using WSREM node name. Is that the minus CNF, basically? Uh, incoming node addresses are set to auto for all, all these nodes. And you can also specify uh, which node you'd like with WSREM node address or the by address parameter inside of the configuration files. Again, you don't have to, to do any of this. You could just let everything be automatic. And just as Gallery Master continue working as per normal. WSREM streaming log. Uh, basically, it has the metadata for enroll events for ongoing streaming uh, transactions. You won't see any results. So if you do select stuff from MySQL WSRAP streaming log, if you don't actually use it, you won't see any results uh, at all. We also have a bunch of new WSRAP functions. Good for your application. Last see GTID, last written GTID, and sync weight after GTID. Basically, it does, you know, returns the GTID for last transaction observed by the client. Uh, made by the client or also can block a client until a node applies and commits to give a transaction. So I think WSRAP sync way up to GTID could be quite useful. Of course, this does require some client uh, some app changes for you to use there, but um, again, extremely useful uh, going forward. Gcash encryption. Basically, you logs are all completely encrypted with the exception of the Gcash, the IB data, reader log, bit log, etc. But the Gcash can also be encrypted. Now, this is an interesting feature because Gcash encryption is available inside of MariaDB 10.4, but only the enterprise version. Uh, Gcash encryption will uh, also be available inside of uh, MySQL 8, Galera 4. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, I I do wonder if uh, this is something that you may also only want to see in a, in maybe. Uh, an enterprise version. I so maybe this is, this is some feedback we could get from people on this on, on this webinar. If you know that is something you would be uh, very interested in um, or or not, but uh, Gcash encryption actually does exist. Uh, we've had this feature now for uh, about a, about a little over a year, and is inside um, MariaDB 10.4. Uh, so you you can actually use this. So you can actually run a fully encrypted. Galera cluster 10.4 with MariaDB today. And uh, it will be something that is in MySQL 8 uh, Galera 4 uh, as well. Non blocking DDL is something that I, I personally am um, very excited about uh, when it comes to uh, Galera 4. Is uh, that because I think a lot of like shared hosting companies, a lot of practical use cases of Galera really just want this. Because if you have a sh like a three node Galera cluster and you have like say a, a thousand WordPress databases on it, and you want to update all of them, uh, you don't want it to lock um, basically all rights on all the database uh, on the cluster when when one of the tenants run WP upgrade to upgrade their database. You want to be able to just lock. Uh, you know that one database, as opposed to locking the entire all the databases on the on the cluster. So I think this is going to be an excellent feature. It's going to be something lots of people really enjoy using, and uh, this is something you know Galera for uh, is is going, is going to show you. So I I really am excited by non blocking DDL. Uh, there is actually a Pacoda actually be cluster eight. Uh, there's a branch, it's early release. So. Uh, Definitely uh, is base supporting from MariaDB 7.10.4. Does not have all the features of MySQL 8 plus Galera 4 that come from ownership. Um, I put yet because it, it, I guess eventually it will. Because uh, once the source code for uh, Galera cluster 4 and MySQL 8 is released, uh, I expect uh, the, the porting to, to occur without uh, any issue. Uh, so that's why I said. Um, at the moment, there is only an internal beta of uh, MySQL 8 and uh, Galera Cluster 4. I have been using it for uh, close to a month. It's it's fairly stable, with the exceptions of the things I mentioned earlier on GTID sequence numbers, for example. Uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, I think uh, we were definitely quite confident of a of January, maybe latest February release. 
Uh, so, you know, you can expect more uh, public beta fairly soon. Uh, we can definitely provide one to, to customers uh, who ask and, and so forth. So I guess, you know, in summary, of course, uh, you know, uh, you know, who, who develops Galera cluster today, it, it is really codeship. Um, who, who has the most developers around Galera cluster? Again, it's, it's codeship uh, and it's, it's growing. So we, we are always hiring to expand Galera cluster development and we, we have a growing uh, amount of people doing it. So obviously who knows the code uh, is the people who make it. So again, it's codeship. And the uh, roadmap for Galera cluster is, is again, largely codeship with our main partner, MariaDB Corporation. And we listen very closely to the community. So when you, you provide feedback, uh, mailing list, uh, GitHub, uh, through our, our salespeople, through to me, uh, a, a, anything really, uh, you can uh, you can help define the roadmap for Galera cluster as well. And uh, it, it's I'd be remiss to say uh, we are not already planning, you know, what features of Galera cluster for going to MariaDB 10.5, for example, because MariaDB 10.5 would come out, you know, next next year, mid, mid of next year as well. And uh, we we have a, a roadmap ahead of what happens after MySQL and Galera 4 as well. Uh, some of which I, I may have already hinted to you uh, of, of what would be appearing. So go to ship, uh, you know, you can buy from us. We've got 24 seven support plans, consulting, training, remote DBA. We support uh, by by SQL uh, Galera cluster. We support Proton HDB cluster. Uh, we can help you know help refer you for your know, Bria DB needs to to Bria DB Corporation uh, as well. Speak to our friendly sales consultants uh, naturally. Uh, Vlad uh, or Larissa uh, uh, both available for for you. Uh, also, the features you'd like to see, uh, you know, speak to us. We we do we do think about. Uh, like non-recurring engineering and uh, expanding the feature set uh, for, for users. So if you know you suddenly decided like you'd like an uh, easier way to configure SSL or you, you feel like you need some kind of other integrations, we could definitely work work on that with you. And we're quite happy to prevent them as well. Yeah, so with that, uh, we I think we set uh, 45 minutes for the webinar. Uh, we're 40 minutes in. Uh, you know, I'd like to say thank you for listening. Uh, we are obviously open for questions if you have any. Though Sakari may have to read them to me because I may just be a presenter today. Okay, okay. We do have a few questions here. Uh, Oracle syntax is nothing by Oracle MySQL code syntaxes. Is it, I guess, should be following? Oh, so for MariaDB. Oracle yeah, syntax. So for, for MariaDB. Hello? Yeah, say, please repeat, there was a cut. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, the Oracle syntax is nothing to do with MySQL. It's a MariaDB feature where they're starting to add different parsers to different uh, databases out there. So your natural SQL mode is SQL mode equals MySQL, but there's a parser for the Oracle syntax. So not Oracle MySQL, but Oracle Oracle base. So you can migrate your Oracle applications to MariaDB back to my Galera cluster. And MariaDB 10.5 also includes a parser for SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server. So that, these are all things that MariaDB is doing. Uh, and you can also be backed by Galera cluster in, the, in those instances. So uh, that's, what the or, that's what the Oracle syntax uh, means, is that you're actually using Oracle, Oracle um, syntax. So it's good for people who are migrating from Oracle, having applications that they maybe cannot uh, change. Or they just want to save on their, you know, fees. Uh, they don't want to pay license fees anymore. Okay, next one. I understand multicast is not available on cloud platforms. Therefore, is there a performance impact of deploying Galera onto AWS or uh, GBC, Google's uh, 
what's that uh, cloud platform yeah yeah so we we definitely are are able to run on Amazon EC2, uh, we have lots of users who, who do run on Amazon EC2, Google Cloud Platform, Azure, and so forth. Uh, please, again, speak to us about how we can uh, help you do that uh, with ease. Uh, we've actually run a couple of webinars too about this. Uh, so you, you will be able to have no, no issue uh, running it. So please feel free to uh, ping us but um, we definitely can run uh, well in the cloud. When will XA be available on Galera? When will XA be available on Galera? That's an excellent question. Um, I, I guess uh, a, go a good answer would be 2020. <laughs> uh xa support will be available and the things that depend on xa support like uh, spider spider should start working so um, we are actively actively working on, on that as is how fast are schema changes with galera 4 and mariadb 10.4 are they instant uh, so don't confuse MariaDB 10.4's instant add column with uh, Galera's uh, schema changes. Uh, again, I don't uh, think we we have uh, we spent much time on improving uh, the speed of schema changes. So if they used to take a certain amount of time for you before, they they probably will take a certain amount of time for you now. Uh, we haven't done benchmarks, but that could be something we could do uh, if that is some, uh, of interest to you. How does Galera compare to InnoDB cluster? Oh, <laughs> fun question. <laughs> so maybe that's that's the topic of a good webinar next, uh, Sakari. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I guess we can cover it. Uh, next year in some of our you know webinars or blogs or yeah. but but generally uh you know gallery has been around for for 12 years it only be cluster which is a which is components uh it, it basically makes use of group replication inside of uh, mysql which is much newer um, it also makes use of uh, mysql router uh, and it uses MySQL shell to configure all of it to, to, together. Uh, I'd say that there, it still has some some things that uh, would probably need uh, improving. But uh, you know, I think uh, they keep us on our toes, and we keep them on uh, on their toes. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, I think Yalera is obviously a, a more fully baked solution uh, at the moment. And I, I think uh, comparison wise, we could actually we could actually spend a good 40, 40, 40 minutes comparing both. So uh, I think it could be ideal for a new webinar or it could be ideal for us writing more about it. Uh, the only maybe caveat around um, InnoDB cluster is that every, every release typically of 8.0 so far we've seen in the last uh, maybe four or five releases, point releases, there are new features being added to MySQL. So any comparison we make would be relatively potentially out, vaguely outdated two to three months after it's, it's happened. So there, there tend to be enhancements, but uh, again, um, it's something we could totally do if people are more interested in, in hearing about it as well. Views on Jepsen benchmarking on Galera or Jepsen? Jepsen, Jepsen yes. A first benchmark. That was done a long time ago. We haven't done a new Jepsen benchmark, you know, but um, I think, uh, you know, those results are fairly available on the internet. So, no, we don't use Jepsen. <laughs> for our, our testing, uh, but uh, we've not thought about restarting. But um, yeah, I, I don't know what you, the, the benchmarks that were conducted from, from Jepson were like years ago. Yeah. 
lots has changed since, since then. Basically, uh, I believe it's like a four year four year gap from then to now. Are there any benchmarks comparing MySQL, Percon, and MariaDB Galera clusters? Uh, so Percona has been known to do benchmarks, uh, obviously. Gal uh, MariaDB has more or less not been publishing benchmarks for some time. I don't know if we are the right people to start doing benchmarks comparing all three Galeras. We could go to a deeper feature feature dive um, in terms of what's available, uh, but no, uh, not not that not that I know of. But if that's something you'd be interested in and uh, you think we should do it, we could totally do do that. All right. Uh... Do we provide recording? Yes, we do provide recording, and somebody is sending uh, wishes to calling that uh, get better from the flu. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I am wondering if you are developing a web GUI for monitoring managing Galera cluster. Uh, that is a good question right there. Uh, so uh, bear bear us with some moment and uh, we can maybe tell you something about that. Uh, yeah. Time zones, issues. Yeah, we will be sending the recording. recording. Yeah, we will we will be sending the recording and and there will be an uh, 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 evening session as well uh, for the U.S. time zone. So it will be morning U.S. time, but uh, evening MA side. So if you want to join another one uh, later today, that that is coming as well. That covers it. Thank you so much for joining our webinar. It was. Uh, fun to have you here again so uh, and look forward to meeting you again